Hey, you ever been to Chancellor Park? That's where I live. My name is Tavin Dillard, and I live in a trailer park called Chancellor Park, and I mow lawns. I'd like to introduce you to my town. I've been making YouTube's videos since about 2006, and then I've transitioned over to other platforms like the TikToks and the whatnot. But here on this podcast, I'd like to clue you into what's going on with me here lately. And this is like a pre-introduction. Now I'm going to send it off to myself for the real introduction. I'm glad you joined me. Bink, bink. Welcome to the Tavon Dillard Podcast, y'all guys. This is Season 4, Episodes 10. My name, Tavon Dillard. I'm old lawns and I live in Chancellor Park. If this is your first time getting around a podcast, let me just bring you up to speed. Firstly, you need something to listen to. Now, I'm sure you figured that part out because you're hearing me right now. So I ain't probably got to tell you that. Like, you need a device. In yesteryear, you'd need a radio of sorts, and you dial it in kind of think, well, this is like that because you can listen with your ears. And then with a podcast, you need to find what they call platform. That's kind of like a diving board. That's platform at the city poo and other poos. Uh, there's diving boards at all pools that have diving boards. That's just how that works. Well, the platform you need to launch your podcast on into the world could be all kind of different ones. A couple big ones are them Apple Podcasts and Spotify's, but there's a bunch of others that you could be listening on, and you probably know that by now, too, because you're listening on it one way or the other. And, well, this is like a radio show, y'all guys. It's a podcast, the Tab and Dillard Podcast, and I'm Tab and Dillard. If you check the show notes for this very podcast right now, you'll see a link to the Tab and Dillard Podcast t-shirt, and you already know what a podcast is. Well, I ain't going to explain what a t-shirt is. You know about that. So I will say it's just going to be a link to all my shirts. And the Tab and Diller podcast is on there. But Early Bird gets the perm. Uh, we have turned the calendar, y'all guys, since last we spoke on the podcast to the merry month of October's. And it's the fall, autumn harvest seasons, the Halloween times of years. And I got a pumpkin shirt. I'm making pumpkin helmets already. Well, I should say one helmet so far this season, but I've been wearing it. Uh, food different times uh, pumpkin helmet and then I got a I got a pumpkin shirt and uh, that's in the show notes too it's it's more of a seasonal you know festive October's type of shirt but you can check that out and of course um, we got some other ones that I mentioned in these previous weeks that are gearing up you know for later on Christmas times and I don't know probably November's maybe later in this month but anyhow that's that's you know for for you to wear to, to stay warm you, you can do all kinds of things in the shirts you know how a shirt works and so i don't know maybe you do a jazzercise or aerobics or exercise bike or maybe you shell pecans or maybe you shell uh green walnuts you know you break them open uh maybe you have to chase a rat terrier that ain't supposed to be an outside dog but it gets out and then uh on the acreage that you live it can be a little bit of a hike and that's why you're mad and you wish you had money to have a golf cart but you don't but anyways you can wear your shirt for all that kind of stuff y'all guys and that's just how it goes so that's it welcome to the podcast we are in well into season fours i mean we on the back sides of season fours y'all and here pretty soon i'll be asking for questions i ain't today no need to send them in today, y'all guys. Seriously, hold on to them because what happens if you send them in too early, they can get lost. Uh, they get buried when people text me or something or email me. But in a few weeks, maybe a couple weeks, I don't know. I just know not this week. I don't need you to uh, send in the Q&As because the last summer, I mean, not the last summer, my goodness. This is my mind trying to get ahead of itself. The last episode of every season of the podcast i do a q and a question and answer and so the few weeks before that last episode y'all send them in and the whole last uh episode of the season every season is me answering your questions so that ain't time for that yet so forget i even said it um and that's the thing now you know we had a fishing tournament in town uh, you heard about that in last week's podcast episode if you ain't had a chance to listen to that one go ahead and check it out we'll be here waiting for you you also may know that i'm saving for a truck you know about that. You know what a truck is. 
four tires, that kind of thing. I had setbacks here recently because my Mima needed some help with her car, 91 Buick Regal, and I had some trouble of my own with the swamp cooler at my trailer, and that's how that goes. Sometimes it takes longer to get to the things you want to get to, but that's okay. Well, this week I had some trouble with my lawnmower. You kidding me, Tavin? I ain't kidding y'all guys. That's my livelihood right there. I cut them lawns. Tavin's Lawn Care Services. Mowing, edging, grass cutting legend. That's right. And anyhow, I had to take my mower out to Donnie Wayne Chambliss' repair shed that sits on the same property as the Bait and Tackle out by the lake. Donnie Wayne's shed sits about 100 yards from the Bait and Tackle. Now, Donnie Wayne, he's the same fellow that fixed my swamp cooler. Uh, he can make them repairs, buddy. That's what I like about him. And he's a friend, too. It's not just because he's good at his job. His hand is fine, by the way. He got snagged by Hank Thistle last week at the fishing tournament on his right hand. Donnie Wayne had to get the hook out himself. Wasn't nothing to him. I probably would have thrown up if Hank snagged me like that, but Donnie Wayne's back at it. So anyhow, I take my mower out there, and Donnie Wayne spent about 15 minutes on it, and he told me no charge, which he didn't have to do that, but he did. He's on my softball team, Team Burger Shed, and I got an update on this week's game here in a bit, and a little update on the playoffs that start next week. But first, I got to get to this lawnmower situation for y'all guys. And you're probably thinking, well, I thought Donnie Wayne fixed it, Tab. And what else, what, what else is there to say? You know, that's what you're thinking. And that's what I'd be thinking, too, if I heard this story. But I know this story, and it don't end that way. He did fix my lawnmower, but here's what happened next. I head over to the bait and tackle. Right, that's like 100 yards away. Just bink, 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 you know, on my, on my feet. Walk over there. You know, it's right near the repair shed, and I check on Rance Farnhart. Now it's mid-morning, and I still got to get to my lawns. I ain't even started my work day yet. I couldn't do it. I needed my lawnmower fixed. So Donnie Wayne was nice enough to fix it, and he actually is the one who picked me up. He picked me up at Chancellor Park, at the trailer park where I live, and drove me all the way out to the lake so we, he could get to his repair shed and get to his twos and start working on that thing. But I was going to see if Rance had a break where he could drop me back off and, with my mower back in town because Donnie Wayne said he hit the ground running and he's getting things done at that repair shed, you know, like his work day start. Now, that is just a figure of speech. Uh, he ain't really running. Donnie Wayne ain't much of a runner. He a big old boy with hands made of leather. That's why he... You know, him catching that fish hook in his hand wasn't such a big deal last week. It's like they, they leather gloves, but they really just his skins. And he'll hit dingers at the softball fields, too. Him and Morton Whitell both kind of got the same approach at bats. Uh, dingers or long singles. That's all you can expect from them uh, when they on the offense at the softball fields. Well, I walk into the bait and tackle. Rance is stalking the sun sunflower seeds in the snack section. He got some music playing, Merle Haggard sounded like, over them speakers. It ain't like them built-in speakers, you know, when you go to certain stores and then they cut off that music when somebody's got an announcement to make, like, Attention shoppers! If you lost a toddler with a can of soda and think he's Spider-Man, please come to the housewares near the kitchen shears. Thank you! Not like that. Like, Rance ain't got that kind of speakers at the bait and tackle. It's just like a speaker that play music on the windowsill. But it's a big ledge there. They use that thing for karaoke sometimes, where you sing along with the words, like a song you heard before, you know? Um, that's how that go. I'm pretty good at that, by the way. So, Rance is restocking the sunflower seeds, and I walk in there, and Rance turns to look at me, and he looked tired. And I told him so. I said, Rance, you look tired. He said, I'm so tired, Tavin. I said, you know, we got a game this week. We got to break that losing streak, Rance. We lost last week. And so it was our fourth loss of the softball season. So we nine, four, and two. The two's for ties and the nine's for wins. And so we lost the past two games. So we're trying to get back on track anyway. Rance said, there was something under my folks' cross brace last night, and Mama called me over there to check it out. Rance's mama is Sybil Farnhart. You know her. Her and Jerry Don, they run the flea market in town. And I was like, how long were you over there, Rance? You know, it's your mom and daddy's under a cross base, you know, trying to find what was under it. He said, long enough to get bit by a raccoon. I said, uh, what did it bite? Rance held up his arm. I didn't see nothing. I told him so. I said, I don't see no coon bite on that arm, Rance. He said, I had a couple layers of sleeves, and that coon didn't want a piece of me anyway. He just wanted to get out of there, but I was in his way. I said, why in the world are your folks letting them animals underneath their house like that away so you can come over in the middle of the night and, you know, fish them out? And he said, they ain't trying to. I reckon it's just, that's just how it happened. Like, you know that happened, how people got cross spaces underneath their house and then sometimes they get stuff under there. Uh, you know, it could be a litter of kitty cats. It could be a litter of skunky cats. It could be all kind of things. And like, how in the world do they do that? But they don't need a big space. You know, some of them animals, they don't need a big space. You know, they can, they can flatten pretty good and kind of sneak under there. And I guess that's what happened. 
Um, I don't think, I ain't, ain't never seen a raccoon flatten too good. I don't know, they just seem to barrel through stuff. But anyways, Rance went on to tell me that it was 10 o'clock at the night time when he got the call. By the time he got to his folks' house, it's pushing 10.30 to the p.m. And then for him to get under there, figure out what was going on, get bit, scare that coon away, seal off the crawl space, is after midnight before he got home. And Rance, he's an early riser. He liked them early mornings, but you get to bed that late, you're going to be tired. You think you'll wake enough to give me and my mower riding to town? You know, what I said to him, because I didn't want Donnie Wayne to have to do it now, and I'm kind of stuck out there. I can't push that push mower back into town as far as it is from the lake. I just couldn't do it. And so, you know, I was asking for a favor. I was reaching out to Rance. Hey, Rance, can you get me into town? He said, oh, sure. Are you ready to go right now? And I said, I'm born ready, buddy. And off we went. Well, I say off we went. I mean, that's a plan. But remember at the beginning of the story, you, you thought, oh, well, Tabin, there ain't no story about your lawnmower. It's fixed. Well, here's the story. Buckle up. We left the bait and tackle like it's going to be your standard, easy, load up the mower, hop in Rance's truck, and let's get to town kind of thing. But it was not. Was not. We step out that back screen door on the bait and tackle that faced the lake. That's the back door that faces the lake because the front of the store faces the main road, two lane that runs in front of the bait and tackle. Well, we step out back there and I don't see my mower. From a quick glance around, I'd say my mower is gone. Now, it ain't got feet, but it do have wheels. So now I'm perplexed because there ain't a lot out there. Like, the lake is a bit of a hike out of town, so somebody had to show it up and move it, best I could tell. Like, just take off with it. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't out there when it happened. I was in the bait and tackle, listening to a little Merle Haggard, catching up about Rance getting bit by a raccoon inside. But now I ain't. Now I'm outside, and I don't see my mower nowhere. I mean, I ain't a detective, although I have figured out who's keeping spoiled lemons in a shoebox underneath my trailer. It's Candy Dilroy. She's about eight years old, best I can tell. Reason how come I know she was doing it? Because I seen her piling up old lemons on her porch, and I asked what her plan was, and she just kind of froze, and she stared at me just like, bink, bink, busted. I asked her again, and she wasn't saying a word. Not a word. Because she knowed what she was doing. And now I know too. Only this thing is, I did not know why. So I asked her, you know, why are you doing that? She, that seemed to be the easiest way to get to the bottom of this. Well, it turns out she heard that if you store dried or kindly bad lemons in a cool, dark place, they grow trees. And she thought a shoebox under my trailer worked for a cool, dark place. I told her, Candy, I work in a lot of yards. And one thing I learned is that if you want a tree, you got to plant something in the soil. Not as in shoebox. Shoebox ain't going to do it. Anyhow, this mystery seemed like a little harder to figure out for me with my lawnmower than that shoebox lemon one. And I really wasn't sure even where to start. And Rance said, well, where's Donnie Wayne? I didn't see his truck. So Donnie Wayne is gone, and so is my mower. And Rance says, you think Donnie Wayne delivered it back to your trailer? I shook my head. I don't know why in the world he would. Well, we figured maybe we'd just catch up with him and get to the bottom of this. You know, we just he, he can't be that far ahead into town, and Rance is going to take me anyway, so we're going to try to find him. Well, me and Rance drive all the way into town, and we don't cross paths with Donnie Wayne's truck not once. Like, you could count him on no fingers how many times we've seen Donnie Wayne's truck. So now we're in town, and Rance drive me onto my trailer park, you know, right into Chancellor Park, because, you know, our best guess was that it got dropped off, you know, back at my house where I live in my single wide. Now, if we get to my trailer... And it ain't there, we ain't really got any more ideas at that point. You know, it was like, well, Donnie Wayne was the last one to see it. Donnie Wayne's truck was here. Donnie Wayne's truck ain't here. My lawnmower ain't here. You know, you put two and four together and you get maybe Donnie Wayne dropped it off at my trailer park. So here we are pulling into the trailer park. There's a few toddlers and diapers. One's trying to ride the back of a stray dog. Nothing out of the ordinary, you know. Well, me and Rance look at each other and he said, what do you want to do? Well, I said we could get an early lunch at the burger shed and come up with a plan unless you need to get back to the bait and tackle. Because uh, Rance put up a little sign that say, Big, be back soon, you know, in the in the doorway of the bait and tackle. Just say, be back soon. And that that's what it means. It's like, I'm. but the thing is, if you walk up to that sign and you don't know when it got put up there, uh, you just think, well, I guess it be back soon. And then you have to decide in your own head what soon is. Like, is that five minutes for somebody or 15 minutes? Like, how long are you willing to wait in front of a be back soon sign that don't tell you no 
specific time at all they're going to be back except soon. And in your head, you're thinking, well, soon is this many minute, you know, kind of thing. So that's, you know, back, meanwhile, back at the bait and tackle, there's a be back soon sign hanging in the, the door. And folks, they'll wait, like I said, or I guess come back later. He just says, we got to find your mower, Tavin. Well, that's a good buddy right there, the way I see it. Rance didn't have to do that. Uh, well, in between my trailer park, which is Chancellor Park, you know that, and the burger shed, there was some commotion between them two locations, like the police with daylights flashing. And who did they have pulled over? Our burger shed teammate, the repairman himself, Donnie Wayne Chambliss. So now this mystery is starting to get mysterier. The officer that pulled him over is Brent Fisdale. That's Misty Fisdale's older brother. She's a gal who worked at the burger shed, but she's also worked at the city poo and all kind of places. She's a real hard worker and a sharp shooter, good aim. She got what would be a wild eye, I guess. Not quite lazy, but sure is close. Anyhow, me and Rance, so we parked behind Brent, and we get uh, out of the thing, and we approach the scene of the flashing lights. I guess we didn't think there was any danger, and we was looking for Donnie Wayne anyway, so it kind of made sense to figure out what was going on. So we just approached. Uh, usually, you know, I guess if there's some sort of a commotion with the police, you don't just walk in the middle like, what's going on here? You know, like your Barney Fife trying to pull your belt up and help everybody. I, but we were just, we weren't thinking. You know, we just thought we know everybody in this town and something going on, what's going on? I'm looking at the bed of Donnie Wayne's truck, and my mower ain't there. And it didn't seem right while Officer Fisdale is chatting with Donnie Wayne. So I just holler out, hey, where's my mower? I was going to wait at least 30 seconds before I did that. But, well, no sooner did Rance and I hop out of his truck than old Brent gets a call on this police radio thing, and they saying there's an accident he needs to go respond to. And we ain't got a lot of accidents on a typical day in this town. So now I'm thinking, man, he already pulled out over Donnie Wayne for something, and, and I know my lawnmower might have something to do with it but i don't know because i don't see it nowhere and then now there's an accident somewhere else in town well we all hear this because it's over one of them walkie talkie type things and donnie wayne just say i bet that's him so now i'm trying to piece that together like who's him like you just walked in on half a conversation and i don't know what's going on well off goes the police and donnie wayne hops into his truck and he takes off and rance and i figured we should too so it's like a Dukes of Hazard episode over here. We followed Donnie Wayne, who was following Officer Brent Fisdale, to who knows where, but it seemed exciting, and we was trying to catch up with Donnie Wayne anyhow. Well, this accident was just when you're leaving town off the highway, but the other end of town from where we came in from, the lake and all that. And it's a single car accident. It looked like it hit a speed limit sign. It was a gray Chevy Cobalt, which is basically the size of a baby shoe. Like if you see it in a parking lot at Walmart or something, you might say, oh, somebody lost a baby shoe. I bet they'll get home and figure out it's missing and circle back here. But it ain't a baby shoe. It's a car. Anyhow, in a speed limit sign, it's going to stop a car that's like that. You know, it's like a baby shoe. It's, it ain't nothing. It, you know, speed limit sign will steady say, hold it right there. The trunk was open, and not because the accident popped it open. The trunk was open because it was carrying cargo that would not allow the little baby shoe trunk to close. And do you have any idea what cargo that might be? That's right. It was my lawnmower. And do you have any idea who was driving this car? Me neither. Now I see all this, but I'm having a hard time piecing this together like a Scooby-Doo hijinks of a mystery. The police do pull up, Donnie Wayne pull up, me and Rance pulled up, and out from that little four-wheeled baby shoe buggy steps Gilbert Phillips. You might recall he beat up an adult bull moose and really got a reputation from that. That's Chlorine Phillips, boy. He played backup catcher junior college in the Ozarks, so there's definitely some potential there. Folks was wondering, you know, uh, if he was going to do something with it. And uh, he worked out. He wears tank tops. He leaves that hair long in the back. I mean, that's, that's Gilbert Phillips for you. He stepped out of that little car looking like a giant, but most folks do next to that car. Well, Officer Fisdale hollered at him to put his hands up. And slowly, this story that has got me so confused is slowly coming together. Now, if you've been around my uh, many police interactions or watched the show Cops, that's pretty much how it went. The police are telling Gilbert what to do. Gilbert is acting confused like he's surprised his day got interrupted and proceeds to tell the officers that he just got there. I guess that's a criminal's way of saying there ain't no way I could have committed a crime because I just got here. 
Well, Gilbert just got here because he's speeding away from town with a stolen lawnmower, and he hit a hit a speed limit sign. Turns out he's seen it driving by the repair shed. He's just driving by. Claims he thought it was free. He tossed it in that cobalt, and then Donnie Wayne seen it all, and the chase was on. Mower was fine. Cobalt was totaled. Not sure what's going to happen to Gilbert, but I will tell you one thing, y'all guys. It's easy to see who your friends are when your lawnmower gets stoled. And buddy, Donnie Wayne and Rance really showed up today. I finally got some lawns mowed too. And then our softball game day rolled around. That lawnmower chase was all the talk at the fields, as you could probably imagine. You know, I'm telling my version of the story, and Donnie Wayne's telling his version of the story. Rance is telling his version. Officer Brent was down there telling his version. It was a hoot. Uh, There's a lot of excitement. We don't have little Chevy Cobalt car chases in town uh, very often, so it is a pretty big deal. And don't think that excitement was going to distract us from what we needed to do. Nope. We had a two-game losing streak to snap. Now, I don't know if you've been paying attention to y'all guys. I mean, we had the interruption with the county fair here a month or so ago where where uh, we, the, all the games were canceled because everybody's doing county fair stuff. And then, you know, we get back into it, and slowly but surely we play in one game, we lose. Another game, we lose. You look around, you, you see, uh, hey, we on a two-game losing streak. This ain't the direction we want to go. I lined up to the pitcher my first at bat, and by lined up, I guess it's like um, just hit it right at him. You know, some people called it lined out, but it wasn't really in the air. So, I don't know, maybe you just call it a grounder. And I still went head first into the bag at first just to send a message like, hey, I'm here, and I'll go all out even after the play is dead because they throw me out pretty quick. Don't sleep on me, y'all guys. I just, you know, it's, it's always an opportunity uh, to get in the other team's head. And if you can head first slide after you've already been thrown out, hey, more power to you is what I say. You don't know how getting in my in their head is just going to come back and, and help you later in the game. And so these are just little seeds that you plant. Uh, you know, it's a game within a game is what they call it. And maybe it didn't help. I don't know. But I do know Donnie Wayne and Rance was on far. And if somehow Donnie Wayne and Rance didn't make it home, Rusty Tidwell found a way to knock them in. So they might end up, instead of getting homers, they might have got a double, single, triple, and Rusty Tidwell will just finish that off for him. JT Whitlow took a grounder to the lip in the third inning. He started bleeding. His girlfriend, Whitney, ran onto the field to check on him, but it ain't like she went out there with a knack or an ice pack or anything to help him. She was just there to put on a show, I guess. She loved that attention. He wanted to play through it. Mort Dwydell told him to use his glove next time. JT didn't think that's too funny yet. You know, it's too soon. I get that. Hey, let me just stand, uh, land this plane, though, uh, as they say. Team Burger Shed, we scored. I hope you're ready for this, y'all guys. Because, you know, we didn't do too bad last week. I think we scored 13 runs and lost. But this week, we scored 17 runs. It is a regular merry-go-round out there. Now, the other guys, they scored 12. It was what we call an offensive outburst. Thankfully, it was a quiet night at the concession stand. Mary Beth Tucker wasn't trying to step it up. It was quiet until Team Burger Shed went out to get our free snow cones, that is, and everybody wanted to hear the story about my lawnmower again. So I told my version. Rance told his. Donnie Wayne told his version. JT's lips swelled up pretty good, but he said that snow cone helped. It always do, best I can tell. I ain't never had a bad snow cone. So Team Burger Shed, we is now 10 to the 4s to the 2s. And next week, the playoffs start. And who's in the playoffs? You guessed it. Team Burger Shed has made the playoffs. We got a pretty good chance to, to really make it deep into the playoffs this year the way I think. Who we playing, you ask? I don't know yet. And I ain't sure I really care right now. It's kind of like bring it on and let's see how it goes. So we're going to see you next week in the playoffs. That's how that go. That is how that go. But before we get to all of that, I just want to remind y'all guys that here in the fall season, there's a lot going on. I have done two fall crafts. I uh, get a little crafty. Um, one of them was pretty terrible, uh, and I, I had to re—I had to try it again. I did the deer in the thicket this past week, 
uh, it was a, a little little pie, just a smaller pie, and then toothpicks in it. And then you get bean or wieners, and you put them on the toothpicks. They like the trees in the thicket. Then you get a plastic fork, and it's like antlers on a deer. And you stick it in the middle of the bean or wieners that are all stuck into that pie. And then you put a half of them bean or wieners just down on the spokes or the little tongs or the little spikes of the fork and then it looked like a nose like the deer got a nose deer in a thicket beautiful fall craft uh, table display snack for a party i don't know what you're getting into but i am helping you serve up the ideas for the festivities that you got to be part of and tavern's bag of bacon get you some at the show notes it's a great snack it's a great gift I have not eaten at all, so that means there's some left for you. Always add a little more bacon. That's how that go. And maybe I'll see you at the donut shop this week at Donut Goals. Uh, I've been shooting one or two videos a week there right now, just uh, highlighting a donut that week that I felt like eating. So there is a lot going on in town. Please check the show notes today for them shirts and, and the merch, the bacon bag. And you'll also see my phone number down there, 501-322. 6249, where you can text me. And then my email is tabdillard at gmail.com. And what are you thinking of the podcast? Like between me and you, what are you thinking of it? Let me know. And be sure to rate it and leave a comment and share where you can. I use that to help promote a, a podcast because y'all got good ideas. Uh, so, you know, October started off a little mysterious, let's be honest. A little bit of a lawn mowing mystery. And uh, it was solved by a speed limit sign, Brent Fisdale. Chevy Cobalt, Gilbert Phillips, and the Pop Trunk. I mean, that's all the pieces to the mystery. I don't think all those things solved the mystery, uh, but we, we, we figured it out in the end. But hey, I will tell you this. If you ain't been snagged by Hank Thistle's fishing hook or had to get a raccoon out of a crawl space underneath Jerry Don Silver Farnhart's house or creased a baby shoe Cobalt around the speed limit sign, you having a pretty good week. Until next time, y'all guys, hello, Octobers. And we'll see you later.